Earlier this year, the Energy Storage Alliance hosted a private roundtable event for our partners and stakeholders in the energy industry in London, with a view to discussing barriers that exist to unlocking the potential of batteries and other forms of storage in Britain. Attendees from groups including the UK Government's Department of Energy and Climate Change, trade groups like the Solar Trade Association, Renewable Energy Association, and manufacturers like Tesla, Wattstore, Red Tea and others enjoyed a lively discussion that focused on getting the market off to the best possible start. One of the biggest stumbling blocks in many regions of the world for storage is a lack of standardisation of technical terms and processes. At that London event, we looked at the example of how Germany, one of the global leaders in installed PV capacity with over 40 gigawatts, is taking its residential solar market away from one driven by feed-in tariffs to one based on self-consumption of solar, in the process trying to maximise the value of both solar and batteries. Jörg Meyer of Germany's solar industry group, BSW Solar, gave a presentation on how his organisation was able to work with the country's federal government to achieve a common understanding of technical standards. Solar installations in Germany are falling in number, but the proportion of those with energy storage installed is increasing. First of all, um, the storage market, the solar storage market, of course has to be seen in combination with the PV market. And Germany was a very booming market throughout the years 2010 to 2000. 12. We tripled the 7 gigawatt, and um, the blue columns are the annual installations of capacity, and you see that then in 2013, after some amendments of our Renewable Energy um, Sources Act, and later another amendment, and this year in another amendment, of course, um, the path was downwards, um, and that was clearly in the um, interest of, um, of the government, because as you might know, the cost burden on German society is quite high uh, due to the um, 40 gigawatts that we have already achieved. But now we are on a cost level that is really low with um, along uh, approximately 10 euro cents per kilowatt hour. Last year, in 2015, we had 1.47 gigawatt. It's a number that was recently published. Um, mainly, this market is uh, dominated by rooftop PV. It's three-fifth. Um, if you look at the last market in um, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in 2015. Um, so we have, well, in, in terms of installed installations, of course, the number of installations, um, Germany is a rooftop market. In recent years, if you look at those years before 2010, it was mainly driven by the small residential market of something between 5 and 10 and 10 to 40 kilowatt feet. Now, look, coming into the storage market, um, there was a development starting from the year 2013. Just to give you an insight, before that, when the incentive program started on 1st of May 2013, there was an annual storage market of approximately, just an estimation, between 500 and 1,000 units per year. So if I talk about storages, I'm talking about residential storages um, combined with small PV installations of up to something like 30 kilowatt peak. I'm not talking here about um, large-scale storages that uh, can be operated by grid operators of something like uh, one megawatt or more. Now, if you look in 2013, um, the, the orange number is always the number that could exactly be um, registered by the KFW Bank, who is administering the, the um, incentive program. So we had um, um, 2,700 systems funded by KFW Bank, but that was only about 50% of the market because the other half of the market felt encouraged to also invest into storages, but they didn't want to comply with the KFW requirements that are quite strong, uh, ambitious, that um, were not so easy to understood by the installers, because the installers also had to sell this program, and the administration process by the KFW bank was quite complex. But they, we worked on that, those issues. We made it much more leaner, simpler, uh, the installers uh, started to understand the program and, um, of course, uh, more and more investors understood that they, if they get a present of 3,000 to 5,000 euros per storage, why not taking it? So in the next year, um, the number of 100 storage units was 5,561. Uh, again, a doubling in terms of the whole market. 
and now in the year 2015, also with the knowledge of many investors that by the 31st of December the, the program was about to be terminated, we had 10,000. So um, up to date, we estimate that we have approximately um, 30,000 to 35,000 units in Germany installed in combination with PV. There's no um, register on that, so it's all about um, estimations, but the numbers that you might read in some reports, most of them are quoted, um, we are quoted because we have a, um, some monitoring um, system surveys we do with all the installers uh, and they um, report to us how much they sell and so we come to these numbers. Um, quite interesting is this. Um, if you look, um, if you do a segmentation by the PV segments of up to 10 kilowatt peak, so this is clearly residential system. You could also do this analysis with 30 kilowatt peak, but um, this says more. And um, you can see that by number of systems, PV systems sold in the German market, uh, under 10, 10 kilowatt peak, we have something like uh, 10,000 in the fourth quarter of 2015. So if you add those, three, <coughs> those four columns, it is about um, 40,000 systems, um, smaller than 10 kilowatt peak, installed in Germany in 2015. And this is the ratio of those systems that are combined with storages. So you see that line is steadily growing. I would ignore this effect here. This is a, re a year end ready effect because uh, everybody uh, assumed that this storage program would be terminated, so they invested. But it's something like 20% of these um, PV systems are already combined with storages. Every fifth PV system, residential PV system, has a storage. One particularly interesting aspect was the development of BSW Zolar's storage passport. Germany has a modest support scheme in place, offering around a third of the cost of a small-scale lithium-ion battery storage system back to the purchaser. However, Installers cannot qualify to receive the funding for their customers unless they meet the stringent requirements of the storage passport, which we'll leave to Herr Meyer to explain. In the first program, um, something like 55 million have been, have been spent. And it's, uh, systems, PV systems up to 30 kilowatt peak are eligible. Now, giving you some details, uh, the program is called KFW275. And it funds a certain percentage of the eligible costs. At the beginning, it's 25% two, of 2,000 euros. So this number is fixed. It's the calculation base. Per kilowatt peak, PV, not storage. You get 25% of grant. So maybe you might ask, why is that? Why aren't they um, supporting the, kilowatt, the capacity of the storage? Well, the true reason for that is that actually this is not an incentive, for, incentive program for storage. It's, it's a peak shaving program because it's incentivizing <coughs> to um, PV operators to lower their maximum feed in, their peak feed in. And um, so uh, they have losses in the energy production. And for compensating them for those losses, they introduce the, the storage incentive program. So this is the technical explanation why we get that grant. It's for the losses for the, by peak shaving. And that's the reason why the calculation base is per kilowatt peak PV. This is something a lot of people mix up. So, and it starts with 25%. So you get a maximum of 500 euros um, um, for a kilowatt peak PV. Uh, just a small example, if you, you have a really small installation of a 5 kilowatt peak PV, and you add up um, 6 kilowatt hours of battery capacity, you would maximum get five times 500, 2,500 euros as a grant for the storage. No matter how big the storage is. It can be two kilowatt hours, it can be five kilowatt hours. You might even um, uh, invest into a 10 kilowatt hour capacity. And at the end, it's your own calculation what is profitable because if the storage is too, uh, too big, it's too <coughs> expensive, you get a little grant. And if it's too small, you still lose a lot of kilowatt hours produced by the PV power system. Now, this uh, percentage is the um, news in the program because um, throughout the last three years, this number was always 30% without change. Now they are declining this number, this percentage, over the next five and a half years, till the end of um, December 31st, 2018. 
So it starts with 25% and goes down. So these numbers are in the directive. And if you translate it into euros, these are the um, euros that an investor gets. It's always to be um, differentiated between either you do a combinated, combinated installation of PV and storage at the same time, or you retrofit an existing PV system within storage. So for example, you installed a PV system in 2013, and now you want to invest into a storage. You can do that, and you get even more money. You get 550 euros. Why is that? They assume, and that's correct, that it costs more money to integrate a new storage into an existing system because you have to change some components. So this is the idea of the problem. Um, normally, if you had a storage without any regulation, and there are a lot of them in Germany too, we don't know the number, what would happen technically? The sun goes up in the morning, sun rises, and in that moment the storage starts to charge. And even before the peak time, the noon time of sunshine, it's full, and it would not um, give, um, store also the, the peak production of the PV system. So the PV system would still feed in at high capacity into the grids. It would be a, still a burden for the grid, for the low voltage grid, grid, and the storage is full. Now for the grid, it's a good thing to make a peak shading. So we have now a 50% line, and the storages have to be programmed or set up in a way that they don't start charging in the morning, but they start exactly at the moment where they can take all the power that is produced during, during the peak time between the 50 and 100% production of the PV system. So this line is 50%. In the first storage program, it was 60. That's one change. Second, um, of course, the government also wanted to incentivize um, quality, so they had a time replacement value warranty. To be honest, I don't know if this is a correct English translation, but there is no word in the dictionary. For all that speak German, it's Zeitwertersatzgarantie. So the, the, if you sell your storage to your, to your clients um, and it, it bro breaks up after, for example, seven years, you still have to pay to the um, customer the rest value that would have been there throughout the last three years. And this is an instrument to enhance the lifetime and the quality of the storages. In the first program, this time replacement value warranty was seven years, now it's 10 years. And there's other requirements like the disclosure of interface points, safety concept, and of course adherence to rules and regulations. As BSW, uh, we also reacted to this development by um, introducing some quality labels and quality instruments. One is the PV passport and the storage passport. <coughs> so you must imagine a lot of installers, or I would call them electricians in Germany, um, two years ago uh, had never had, a, had to install a storage before in their professional life. Now they shall do it for the first time, and it's quite an issue to install a lithium battery in the in the base of a house where children live, where a family lives. That's a different thing than a um, rooftop PV. So it was quite important to give them some insights and educate them on how to install uh, storages correctly. And this storage passport is an, um, kind of a checklist, but quite a big checklist, where the installer has to uh, confirm that he applied all rules and standards. I mean, this sounds so basic, but you must imagine the storage market is new, so a lot of installers didn't know the rules and standards, so they confirm it to, um, to the customer, and it, it's translated in a language that the customer understands. So the installer confirms that he applied with all the rules in the, in the passport, and also this passport was um, accepted by the government as a funding requirement for the program. It's needed for the investors to show up, to come up with either this passport or with another declaration to show I, have, I comply with those rules. We're expecting to see how the UK and other nations follow the lead of Germany and other early adopters like Japan and Korea in the coming months to address that lack of industry standardisation and other barriers including regulation. It's early days but it seems critical we get this right.